David Bay here for MuscularDevelopment.com. We are in Pittsburgh for the 2015 Masters National Championships. I am here with light heavyweight, over 35 and over 40 competitor, Joe Piersante. Anybody that's been on MuscularDevelopment.com or follow me on social media over the past month, you guys know who Joe is, uh, for those of you who don't. Um, Joe here, fantastic bodybuilder. In 2011, I believe uh, I had been told, Joe lost your eyesight in Afghanistan, uh, suffered a gunshot wound while I was serving the country. First off, Joe, um, just on behalf of myself, everybody at MuscularDevelopment.com and everywhere, I want to thank you for your service, everything that you've been through. Uh, and, and from a personal note, it's an absolute honor being here doing this interview. For the people who aren't familiar with you, you know, give us a little bit of background. What I'd like to do is kind of start you know, before, um, before you lost your vision, how you got started in bodybuilding and competing and things of that nature. Well, I just want to say um, thank you for having me for my interview today. I'm very excited for this. And how I got started in bodybuilding, I grew up in the city of Detroit, Michigan, playing sports all my life, played football throughout college, and then after college I was looking for something competitively to do, and I had lifted weights through playing sports to try to get better at sports, and then I decided to try my hand at bodybuilding. I always it was pretty big and strong. And my first bodybuilding show was the Central States in Michigan in 1992. I went in as a light heavyweight, my first show, and won the light heavyweight open and just missed winning the overall. Okay, now from there, 1992, we had spoke a little bit earlier, took a bit of a break, um, didn't come back to competition until I believe you said 2007. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's correct. In, in the interim, I had... Um, taking a job in the city of Detroit for the Detroit Police Department for four years. Worked a variety of assignments. My last year was a full-time tactical team with the city of Detroit. Then I got hired with the Department of Justice and moved out to Phoenix, Arizona. During the whole time, I still kept training and staying in shape. Then in 2007, I was training with Dusty Hanshaw, who just won his pro card last year at the North Americans. And I decided I wanted to compete again, so I decided to do the Arizona Open, which was the state championship sh show in 2007. I again won the light heavyweight open and then I also won the 35 to 40 junior masters class also. Okay, now take us a few years forward. Um, you said uh, when you lost your eyesight, it was 2011, you were serving in Afghanistan. Now, were you in the service after high school or did you join later in life? This is through the Department of Justice still. Okay. It's a um, special mission unit kind of like the overseas kind of tactical team. Okay. We work with U.S. military special forces along with our coalition partner special forces. In Afghanistan, we were going after the um, heroin trade there because the insurgents and or Taliban makes their money to fund their insurgency by the sale of illegal drugs. So that's where they get their money to do that, to cause their reign of terror, and we go find where they're producing heroin, where they're selling chemicals and equipment to manufacture heroin. We will find these locations out. We will work up a plan, and then we will do an assault slash raid with U.S. or coalition special forces and seize the, the drug evidence items and prosecute and arrest anybody who's on scene with the help of our Afghan coalition partners. All right, Joe, I have this lovely lady next to us. Why don't you introduce everybody at MuscoDevelopment.com. Tell us a little bit about uh, who this is. This is my um, lovely wife, Ashley Persante. We met when I moved to Quantico, Virginia, or Fredericksburg, Virginia. We met before my, my first tour in Afghanistan in 2010 mm -hmm. on a fitness singles website. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Perfect. <laughs> and it worked. First time on a dating site, and it, it worked. And uh, we got in contact two months prior to my first deployment in Afghanistan, the spring-summer tour of 2010, and we stayed in communication while I was over there, and we came back. We continued to hit it off, and we became training partners, and we ended up getting married after my second tour in Afghanistan, after I got shot. Okay. Now, tell us a little bit about, uh, Ashley, about, about that experience. I'm assuming you're back home. You get the news yeah. that he's been shot and, and involved in, in that. Did you know at first that he was going to lose his eyesight? Or no. uh, I'm assuming as th that was the last of your concerns in that uh, in that case in time. Can you tell us a little bit more about all sure, that? Sure. Yeah. Um, actually, 
it was early in the morning and people came to my door and I didn't know who they were and they were wearing suits and I opened the door and I immediately knew by the looks on their faces that something was wrong because I actually that night had been trying to get in touch with him. Um, we used Skype mostly and he wasn't answering any of my calls and he always said the only time you need to worry is if you really can't get in touch with me and people show up at the door. Okay. And that's what happened. So um, I knew something was very bad and immediately they were like, he's not dead, he's not dead, he's still alive. But, you know, I really had no idea what to expect. And I think it, I waited about five days until he went from Afghanistan and then he went to Lonsdol, Germany, and then he was transported to Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. So that was a Monday and I finally saw him on a Friday. And so it was a long period of waiting for me, five days felt like a lifetime, um, and then when I finally saw him, it was really, really difficult to see him in the condition that he was in, and um, I actually didn't even know that it, had, it affected his eyes until we got there and the doctors came out and they're like, he's going to be blind. And then I was immediately concerned about him because I didn't know how he would deal with that. Sure. Well, let's, let's fast forward a little bit and talk recovery. I mean, obviously losing your eyesight. Um, uh, that's a major thing for, for anybody to go through and it provides you know challenges and, and difficulties that I don't think most people can even really you know wrap their head around uh, when it happened and you know you found out you weren't going to re regain your eyesight you know, talk to us a little bit about your mental state I know a lot of people when when they go through things like that or any sort of you know accident or something that's gonna you know throw a major curve in, in the lifestyle they've gotten used to. You know, some people get really down on themselves. Some people kind of bounce back quick and say they're going to just get back to the regular life. How was that for you? You know, to be very honest, it was tough at first. I remember sitting in the hospital wondering, what am I going to do? Am I ever going to be able to work out again? You know, can I go back to work? What am I going to do? But throughout all my life, I've never been a quitter. I've never quit anything in my life. I've always tried to strive to be the best at whatever I did. And um, I just made a cognitive choice that if God wanted me to be dead that day in that field in Afghanistan, I would have been dead. But there was a better, higher purpose for me that he wanted me to live. So I decided that I'm going to make the best out of this situation. You know, when things happen like that to you, you can choose to curl up in a corner and let the world pass you by. Or you can get out there and do as much as you can. Go out there and do. You know, don't feel sorry for yourself. Have that winning mentality, mentality that kind of warrior spirit, where you go out there and you say, I'm going to do, I'm going to show people, I'm going to motivate people, I'm going to encourage people, just because something bad happens in your life. And as we know, in life, a lot of bad things happen. Probably sometimes more bad things than good things. But what defines us as a person, when these bad things happen, what do we do? How do we respond? And I chose to respond positive. And there's days it's tough. You know, there's days I wish I had my eyesight, like training for this show. I put a lot of pressure on my wife. She had to make all the food and everything. And I can't see how I'm looking. I got to rely on my diet coach, Shelby Starnes, to tell me. So it's tough and it's hard at times, but you just got to keep going. And my biggest thing in life now is to help. I want to motivate other people which I, th I think I speak for everybody <laughs> when I say that you've already done that. Now, when we're talking about competition and getting back on stage, when was it that you said, you know what, I need to get back on that bodybuilding stage. I'm going to start training for something. You know, obviously this is we're four years after your accident, right. first time back on stage. Was it something that you kind of progressively were thinking about more and more, or did something happen where it just clicked and you said, I need to get back into competition? Well, I get back into training as soon as I could, and I put my size on back rather quick. And about a little... Over a year ago, we had got with Shelby Starnes, our diet coach, and my wife was using him. She competes. And um, I decided, okay, I want you to put an off-season diet together for me, Shelby. So we put a diet together. We lost some body fat, got my weight down, and then built me back up to 253 pounds. And I decided, oh. um, hey, um, what do you think about a show, Shelby? He says, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. So that's when we decided I'm going to do a local show. I did the, did the Virginia Grand Prix, NPC Grand Prix. Which you won your weight class and the overall. Yes. Awesome. June 13th. And during the, the prep for that, I said, Shelby, what do you think about Masters Nationals? He said, go for it. 
So I decided to do, you know, the first show, the NPC Grand Prix first as a warm up, and then the Masters National, which led me here today. Yeah, and, and for those of you uh, that are following along at MuscoDevelopment.com, we got pictures that are going up in the threads. We're also going to have our professional galleries. Um, also on MuscoDevelopment.com's Facebook or Muscoe Development's Facebook page, you guys can see some of the pictures. I think everybody will gr agree that you looked absolutely phenomenal from a muscularity and from a conditioning standpoint. You know, you didn't quite make the first call out. It was a very, very tough class, yeah. um, and I think everybody will agree with that too. Yeah. Masters Nationals, it's, it's no, you know, it's no joke. I think everybody has learned by now that this competition has has really become the elite of the elite in the country as far as anybody over 35. It's not kind of the. Uh, not, not to take anything away from the guys who competed, you know, 15, 20 years ago, but the level of competition has has sure. rise significantly. Now, Ashley, when he's getting he's getting ready for the show, you know, obviously looking in the mirror um, in, in 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 assessing your progress is something that bodybuilders do probably way too, way too much. Right. I mean, him not being able to see what he looks like right. uh, is that something that you helped him out with a lot? You know, he's working with a diet coach, but I imagine you being there on a daily basis and being a competitor yourself uh, was that something where you're kind of being his eyes as far as right. how he looks and how his progress is yes, coming? Yes, definitely. Especially after he'd have like a cheat meal or something, and he'd wake up how you know. Am I looking better today? What do you think? And definitely from like a posing aspect, I take all his progress pictures, so I have to help him with that. But um, yeah, between myself and Shelby, I think we, we got him pretty well covered, but I, I can't imagine what it would be like to not, you know, because I compete myself, to not be able to see sure. you know, your progress. It's really, it's really difficult, but he did a really good job with it. That he did. You know, guys, I've been to, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many bodybuilding shows I've been to <laughs> over the last uh, two and a half years traveling for musculardevelopment.com. And, and I don't know that I've seen uh, a standing ovation at any show that I've been to, amateur or professional. And we actually got two tonight uh, when oh, Joe yeah. came out for the over 35, over 40. Um, and I don't know that I've heard that much love from a crowd at any show either. And I've been Aww. to some big ones. So um, obviously you inspired a lot of people, uh, not only across the world, but right here in Pittsburgh. Uh, as Bob Chicarilla would say, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you if there's something in your future. Or are you going to kind of just go back to the drawing board and talk to Shelby? Well, I'm going to go back and talk to Shelby and get a plan. Probably like to compete next year. Maybe this Masters Nationals again. Maybe North Americans. Talk to my diet coach and we'll get a plan. Put an off-season plan together. We'll put that plan in motion. And um, if I can, I would like to give a shout out to yeah, anybody, somebody anybody else. You like, just time, <laughs> I would like to give a shout out to John Meadows. We've been doing his John Meadows Mountain Dog training for prior to when I was shot. I think it's the best training system around. And I want to give a shout out to my wife, Ashley, who she recently got her pro card several weeks ago at the Universe. Same in, show as John. In yeah. Women's Physique. Yes, it was very incredible. On July 4th, <laughs> our country's birthday, they both got their pro card. Awesome. All right, guys, we'll tell you what, I know uh, Joe's been uh, waiting a little bit backstage to do this interview. I had some other stuff to do, and we know he's been wanting to get some food. <laughs> so uh, I, could, I could honestly probably sit here and, and chit-chat with this guy all night. But uh, I'm going to let him go so we can get some food, uh, enjoy the wonderful showing. Uh, once again, I think I speak for everybody uh, at MoscowDevelopment.com, Facebook, social media. Uh, when I say uh, congratulations, uh, thank you for your service and your absolute inspiration to anybody who knows who you are and I think after this weekend it's going to be a lot more people than uh, than they do right now <laughs> so uh, guys we're going to wrap this up so one more time this is David Bay uh, with Joe Piersante and his lovely wife Ashley from the 2015 NPC Masters National Champions in Pittsburgh for MuscularDevelopment.com.